This is tutorial 16 on how to create a plane in Plane Maker and Blender now. This is Blender part 2. And in this tutorial, I will concentrate on getting you used to Blender's interface. It is very different than other programs' interfaces. It doesn't fall into either Mac or Windows category of interfaces. This is just an introduction. What I plan to do is show you the basics to follow along with the tutorial. And I find that the best way to learn a software program is by having an object lesson. Uh, in this case, we're working on the ERJ140, and that's our object lesson for this particular uh, program. And as I go along showing you the, the things that we need to do on this plane, uh, I will tell you and teach you how to use the functions, and we'll get a hang of the program that way. But before I get to that level, I need to actually show you some very, very basic things that you need to know in Blender so that you don't get frustrated using it at first. When you learn how to type, you go through a process of uh, why do I have to use all ten fingers? It's so much easier with two fingers and and you kind of rebel against the established method because you just can't see that using all ten fingers would really increase your productivity. And for Blender that's similar because Blender is conceptualized by mainly your left hand belongs on the ASDF keys on your keyboard, that's like the home position, and your right hand belongs on the mouse. The concept of Blender is to be fast on it so let me walk you through the interface a little bit. First, I'm going to cover navigation. Pretty simple. You use the numpad to go to back view, which is 1, side view, which is 3, and top view, which is 7. To go to front view, you would hit the shift key and do 1, shift 3, and shift 7. I think I already covered in the last tutorial that you can use your middle mouse button to pan the plane around, uh, rotate it around uh, an axis, and if you hit the shift key while using the middle mouse button, you can actually pan the whole scene around. Uh, depend it's like using the hand tool in Photoshop. It's like grabbing the scene and moving it around. You can also use the 2, 4, 6, and 8 keys on your keypad to do panning around, uh, just like with the middle mouse button, but it's sort of in discrete steps that you can set in the preferences, how many degrees each of these discrete steps take your, your object. And then the other function is the 5 key. We'll switch between orthographic view and perspective view. Perspective view is what we would expect to find in real life. Everything sort of has a vanishing point at the horizon line. This is perspective view. Orthographic view is a more mathematical view of things. It's not as realistic. You'll see that the nacelles here look bigger than the rest of the plane, disproportionately bigger. That's because it's just a projection of the mathematics, like the geometry of this plane. If you hit 5, it looks more um, as though it's taken out of perspective. So those are the basics of navigation in Blender. At this point, I should probably uh, point you to the Blender wiki, which is wiki.blender.org. And here's where you will find a very good place to start with Blender. You'll find the user's manual. You'll find the, the quick start, noob to pro wiki book, essential Blender. Uh, hotkeys, forums. This is the place to go if you really want to learn Blender right. And I really recommend you do that. I can't, in these 10 minute tutorials, I cannot give you enough uh, Blender background and knowledge for you to become really solid at it. Don't expect to have a plane that you can uh, model and finish in a week or whatever before. It's kind of like having to write an essay without having learned how to type. First, you have to learn how to type before you can write 90 words a minute and, and complete an essay for a class. This is sort of what that's like. I can only show you the basics, and I hope that you will go off on your own and figure out Blender yourself. I'd point you to the right resources, and I will keep doing so. Get used to doing using Google. Get used to going on YouTube and finding other people's video tutorials. If you get all your information from only one source, it tends to be a little one-sided. But again, I hope that my approach will help you because I have a, a concrete object lesson, and you have a goal ahead of you to create a high-quality plane, and that will really help you in learning uh, blender the way that you need to learn it. All right, next let me point out the interface characteristics for you a little bit. Uh, you can grab these handles of the windows and separators, and if you let go of them, they resize the window in question. And you can also see that the mouse will activate whatever window you're in. You can tell by the uh, bar being highlighted a little bit more. And whatever key commands you press depend on which window the mouse is in. So if you have the mouse in this window and you press a key command that you thought should affect the plane, you're going to be surprised. It's not going to affect the plane. It's going to affect whatever is going on in this window here. Uh, okay, so besides moving the boundary line uh, around, 
You can also split this window by right clicking on it and split area and you will have a line that you can drag either to the upper or lower a window depending on which one you would like to split and then you can split it along wherever you'd like to split it and that allows you to open up multiple uh, window modes for example if, I, if I'm animating something I can open up the IPO curve editor if I'm skinning something I can have the uh, uh, image editor here and this allows for very flexible interface and if I need to join the windows again, I just right click on it and say join areas and the arrow will determine which direction it will join in. And uh, this make, creates for a very modular interface. Here, for example, uh, this is what's called the header down here. It displays menus that are contextually based. They're adapted to whatever it is you're, you're working with here. And these buttons will switch uh, this window to perform whatever function you need. The action window, the NLA editor, we'll get to all this stuff a little later. But just so you know that these windows, every one of these windows is modular and every new window that you create uh, can uh, adapt whatever function you need it to, to adapt. So for example here I can right click on this uh, header and say I don't want any header here so it vanishes. And if I right click on this again I could say add header and there it is again. I could also tell the header to move up so it's at the top of the, this window or at the bottom and I do that all with the right mouse button. Now. Blender has a very unintuitive way to set preferences, I find. This thing comes down like a drawer. And uh, I'll do that again for you. That kind of I, I thought it was just the weirdest thing when I first uh, got into Blender. You grab this border and you pull it down. And here, this reveals all sorts of preferences that you can set. Uh, edit methods, your undo steps. You can I always slide them up to 64 because I need as many undos as I can. You can set language uh, preferences here, themes, you can switch a, a theme here, rounded. Uh, I think you can download more themes, I never bothered doing that, but uh, if that's your style of working, you want to customize everything, you can probably find some themes on the blender.org website or something. Here you can say uh, auto save recent files, up to 10 files, that's a very useful feature if you're working on stuff where you're exploring a lot of things, you always want to have a backup of, of the last good uh, file in your archives. Then system and OpenGL, here you can, for example, I will always work on a, on, a, on a laptop. I don't have access to a keypad. So this button will, for example, help me to emulate the numpad. And I can use the top row of number keys on my keyboard uh, to do the top side and uh, uh, front thing or back or whatever. So it helps me navigate the program when I'm on a laptop. So these are your preferences. If you want to save your global preferences, you can do so by going to file and say save default settings now keep in mind if I were to do this now then blender would always open up by default with this airplane loaded in the 3d window I don't want that so I'm not gonna do that right now so I'd recommend taking some time and setting up blender the way you want to set up blender and then saving those preferences with the uh, save default settings command but let me just suggest to you that don't mess around with the preferences until you are comfortable using Blender the way it was designed to be used. I know that people coming from other software programs want to adapt this program to work the way they're used to having it work in their other programs. I just recommend not doing that because there are reasons why Blender is laid out the way it is. And I personally thought at first I would never get used to it and I was going to customize the heck out of it. But after a while I did learn the wisdom in it. It's almost like sort of asking what's the reasoning behind the QWERTY layout of the keyboard? Why isn't it laid out alphabetically? Well, there's a reason for it. It's uh, designed for speed. So that's what you pretty much get with Blender. And don't be fooled, Blender is not a simple program. It's not uh, just because it's open source and just because it's small download size. It is extremely powerful. You have a game engine integrated here. You have a ray tracer and a full-fledged rendering engine in here. You can make movies. You can render QuickTime videos. And if you do a search on the internet comparing Blender to some other major players out there in terms of 3D graphics programs, you'll find that uh, many people prefer to keep Blender in their arsenal of 3D graphics tools simply because Blender allows for very fast uh, workflow. And that's because of the philosophy of Blender. This is what I want to get into next. So thanks for watching, um, and I hope to see you in the next uh, couple of tutorials.